Hi, welcome back all of you, Nana here. And then in this record, we are going to see the power of allocation in transfer orders because that is the biggest power. So we are going to see the power of allocation in transfer orders as well as the return of transfer orders. So both things uh, we are going to have a look at it now. So let me go on and share my screen now. <clears throat> and now let me go and then make an item. We, we already have a structure on T03 actually. Fine. In that, I will now go and then uh, make one uh, this thing now. <clears throat> I will now make one uh, uh, what's called an item. Fine. Let us now go on and create our item actually. So go there. I will now go to the product information management. So I'm now going to get the uh, T0305. We are completed now. We will now make a T0506 item in which we'll now have a look. Now click on it. We'll now go to <clears throat> create an item. So it is on T03. Mass shark. I'm putting it on it. And then I will now choose my purchased item template and bring it over here. And, get on here. and then ensure that it is approved actually. Otherwise, you have to choose some other item plus one. The approved is coming. Item status is active. Life cycle phase is what? Some production. And then I will now say it is a T0306. Fine. It is a TC. Fine. Allocate a return. Fine. So allocation and return, I am going to test it actually. So TC allocation and return, I am going to test it. T0306 is the one. So allocation and return, we are going to test now. And the power of uh, transfer orders, not, not, not TZ actually, and transfer orders. The power of transfer orders, allocation as well as return. I do not take off it. And put on. So go there. So allocation, we are going to test now. Fine, go there, come on. I will not go to the specifications. <clears throat> Here, we have to make it as each actually. Make it as each. Choose it now. Fine, click on OK. And then I go to the specifications. And then here, what I do is I will now go to the inventory straight away. I will now go to the inventory straight away. And then here, lot control is full control. I mean. And then the, uh, the starting prefix is what uh, I will now say lot underscore. And then starting number is 100. Uh, anyhow, I am not going to generate the lot numbers. So let it be anything. It doesn't matter. And then the shelf life is what user defined expiration date. <clears throat> and not uh, rather, uh, I will now say uh, uh, user defined expiration date. Okay. <clears throat> will not use the user defined expiration date. So whenever I'm going to receive a lot, I'm going to say when it is going to expire, actually. User defined expiry date. <clears throat> so this is the one I'm not going to do it now. Fine. So with this, we are going to test the allocation, user defined expiry date. Then afterwards, I go to the purchasing and then I'll normally used to give a list price, actually. And then in the bottom, you go down, <clears throat> make it as this. No, fine. This is the additional attribute when compared to EBS. No? And then make all of them as this. And then go there and then assign it to the org. So go to the associations. Let me associate to both orgs. No? And the, both the source and destination org. Self net. So the source organization, fine. It is the T03. One is the source and then two is the destination. So let me assign it to both orgs. So click on apply and then click on that. Okay, fine. Go there. And then the six, 0306 is now getting created with a user defined expiry date. Now we'll now go and then receive the item into the org. Now go on and receive the item to the org. You're going to receive the item to the org. <clears throat> so we'll now click on the star and then I go to the inventory overview and then it does not receive it actually. So go there. So on the what's called on the destination, we had to have it now. Fine. We must have the items in the destination actually. I go that point. Uh, rather, I must have an item the source now. Uh, rather, uh, the source to destination, uh, we are going to move it now. Fine. <clears throat> so source is uh, T01. <laughs> One and then a destination is so. So we will now have sufficient one in the source only. Sir. In the source, we had to have that. We'll now go there. So go to the create miscellaneous transaction. We'll now change the org to T031 actually. So click on the change org and then I will now say T031. So in this place, we are now going to have sufficient item. From here, what happens is we are going to uh, move it to T032 actually. So let us now create an item. Fine, go there. So the org is changed in this place. Fine, go there. We'll now make a miscellaneous. Fine, click on the create miscellaneous transaction. Go there. So I'll now drop down. I will now say miscellaneous result now. Mm -hmm. And then I will now put the offset account over here. Now, fine, you already seen about how to put the offset over there. Now, I click on it. And then click on search. I will now choose one of the offset account. This will be given by the financial stake. Mm -hmm. So watch my previous records. It will all tell you about everything. Mm -hmm. So click on OK now. Fine. So I will not say use current item cost. Well, yes, because I'm we are not doing the costing of it. We already tested the costing everything. So click on plus. 
<laughs> so item is uh, T0306. Fine, go that one, tab it. Becoming. I will be keeping it on the FGS. No, fine. FGS, I will not go there. Keep on it. I will not choose the FGS. I will not keep 100 quantities over here. And then I'm going to give a lot. If I click on the edit details, I'm going to give a lot. So lot will be lot one, not one. Right. I will know first of all, we have to give the lot. Okay. Lot is what? Uh, lot one, not one. And then give it app. When it is going to expire, I'm going to say. Expire is the important one. I click on it. So uh, lot one is going to expire only on 31st actually. Right. Lot one, not one is expiring on 31st. Fine. We have got 100 quantities. Whereas lot one, not two will be expiring before actually. Lot one not two will be expiring before this what else? Remember? So lot one not one is expiring on 31st of July. <clears throat> and click on okay for 100 quantities. And then I will now add one more line. No? <clears throat> well, the quantity has to become okay. The quantity goes away. Whenever you put a, a lot, the quantity automatically goes away. So we have to give the quantity. So it will not throw an error that the quantity is not mentioned actually. So let us now accept it and then give the quantity. <laughs> so you must enter the lot serial number quantity actually. 100 quantities. So this is expiring on 31st of July. If I click on plus. So we had to give the quantity only after giving the lot actually. So this is one not one lot actually. Right? One not one lot. Uh, uh, rather, one second. <clears throat> How I want to simulate actually. Uh, one not one lot. Okay, yeah. Okay. okay. So T0306 on the name tab. Go down, my friend. <clears throat> I will also say FGS. And then click on the edit details. <clears throat> so this is lot one not two. Lot one or two. And then I will now put a date which is now before that. No point. 29th itself is expired. So I am now going to create a picking rule where whichever is going to expire first has to be allocated. So naturally, what happens is lot one or two will be allocated. So we will now ask the system to allocate as per the expiry. Whichever is expiring first is called first expiry, first out. So lot one or two will be allocated. And afterwards, if there is not sufficient quantity, then lot one or one will be taken. So lot one or two is expiring before lot one or one actually. Right? So I given it now. I click on OK. <clears throat> so lot one or two is expiring before that. I click on OK. <clears throat> and then let us now create a picking rule for the I click on sorry. We'll get a picking rule. We are now going to get two picking rules. Fine. <sighs> we'll now get two picking rules actually. So click on submit now. Fine. So lot expiries are now 29th and 31st actually. So the transaction is now completed. Let us now create our picking rule. I click on OK. We'll now create the picking rule actually. So go to this place and click on it. You go to the setup and maintenance. <clears throat> and then we will now create a picking rule. I click on it. We'll now go to the manage search, manage picking rules. So go there. So manage picking rule. And then go into that. So let me first of all create a picking rule. I click on plus. I will now say it's a T03. <clears throat> the pick one. Find pick one. So it is for picking actually. So there are multiple priorities are there. I will not uh, what happens, allow partial picking. Fine. So partial picking. Uh, so I'm not enforcing a single lot. Fine. Now what happens? I'm not going to go for 120 quantities. So multiple lots are required. If I am enforcing it, the allocation will fail actually. If you go for 120 quantities, we don't have 120 quantities on a single lot actually. So this should not be an accordant. Shelf life also we can control it. So some companies will be enforcing a single lot in which what happens, the allocation fails actually. So because we have only 100 each on every lot. So if you are enforcing it, in this case, it will be fairing. So depending upon the need, you have to do it. And priority is what? I will also say lot first expiry first. I have got only, there are so many priorities that is the first expiry first. So this is, one. So this is now first expiry first out. So lot two will be allocated. Lot one, lot two will be allocated as per this action. I click on seven close my, this thing is there. Fine. So we should not make it as active actually. We will not make it as active. I will click on seven close. No, I think we have to make it as active. I will not make it as active and then click on seven close. Now we will now assign it to our uh, uh, to organs. Right? Well, come on. Self and then click on manage assignments. So click on manage assignments. Let me create an assignment. I'm click on assignment. I'm not going to get assignment. So this is for what? The organization, the source organization. T03 is one. Sequence is one. So the picking rule is what? T03. And then you tap. So the picking rule. And then this will be, this is for the item. Right? T0306. So remember, there must be at least one criteria on the picking. If no criteria is there, then what happens? The picking rule will not be allowed, will not be uh, applied at all. If no criteria is now there, nothing will be the this picking rule will not be allocated, and then the system will not take a default picking rule of absolute last in first row. Whichever has come into the system first, that will be allocated. Absolute last in first row is the default picking rule. So if you are writing a picking rule, ensure that what happens is one of the criteria is already there. 
So at least what happens, you give the destination submit or something like that, fine. whichever is you feel more re relevant. Here. So since I am now testing it, I am now doing it on item. It is really impossible to what happens, uh, put a, uh, what happens, assignment on an item basis. No? Fine. That means what that many assignments. If there are thousand items of that, we have to have thousand assignments. It is impossible actually. Okay. So but you have to find out some other thing which is common for all the items, and then put one criteria. One criteria is a must for the picking rule to be enabled actually, and then active, and then I am now activating it. So now this picking one is now going to be applied for the uh, picking from T031. It'll be done. If I know, you know, we're going to pick it. What happens? This rule will be applied, and then it will be allocating as what as first expiry, first out. Fine, give a save and close. You know that it's not allocated. You know that. So it's not allocated. You click on done now, and then you'll not have a look at it again. Fine, click on it. I will not edit and then have a look. So this is already active. Fine, go there. It's a lost first expiry. <clears throat> now I will not create one more thing. I'm not going to return back. Fine. Now I'm not going to go for 120 quantities. So 100 quantities of lot one or two, which is expiring first, will be allocated. And then 20 quantities of lot 101 will be allocated. Fine. So that will be allocated. Now, what I'm going to do is I will not uh, what happens if you go there. I will not make another thing. <clears throat> I'll not make one more rule. I'll not make one more rule. Fine. It's a T03. Fine. I will not say uh, return rule. Return pick. So for the return, what happens? I'm not going to have a different way of picking it. I will not say active. <clears throat> Fine. Allow partial picking. Fine. That not. Priority is not first expiry first lot, but what happens? A lot ascending. So in the lot ascending, one not one will be allocated. Fine. I'm not going to go for lot ascending because one not one is the first lot, and then one not two is the second lot. So whereas the previous one, one not two is going to expire first, that will be allocated 100 quantities, and then 20 will be allocated from the one not one. So while I'm returning it, I'm not going to use lot descending. A lot ascending actually. Lot ascending is. So give a save and close now. There's a return pick. Now. Click on save and close. And then let me assign it to this man. There's a return pick. Now. Click on manage assignments. And then let us make it. So click on close now. This is for return from the uh, destination or 032. Sequence is one now. So picking rule is what? T03. And then I will now put the return pick. Now. And then I'll put the save item. T0306. So when you're returning it, it will now allocate 101 first time. 101 it will allocate first. And then afterwards, what happens? It will be allocating or not based upon this. So return pick is what? Based upon ascending. And then whereas there for the first org, it is based upon first expiry first org. So you can have different, different combinations. Make it active. Right? Remember to make it active. And click on save and close. By which what happens? It will not done. Mm -hmm. right. So we can have different, different uh, picking rules for different, different criteria as actually. No. So uh, we have 100 each of uh, lot 101 or 102. Fine, go there. It's all there. So I'm now going to create a transfer order. Fine. From the destination or I'm now going to create a transfer order to the source, actually. The destination or is not having any item at all, any quantity at all. Only source is having one. Fine, go there. So click on the star icon. And then before this, what happens, we'll now have a look at the other one. Fine, click on it. We'll now go to the manage intro or parameters. Fine, click on set up and maintenance. And then we'll now have a look at the manage intro or parameters. Now go to the search. Fine, go there. Manage inter percentage point or percentage parameter percentage. So we go there and then we will now give this now. Right? Manage inter organization parameters. We go to the manage inter organization parameters <clears throat> and then query for the organization T031 and then click on search now. Find the source to destination we already have defined. If you click on the edit, you know, see it is in transit and then we are now enabled the transfer order required. So transfer order is required. So it is in transit and then standard is approved. <laughs> Whereas from three zero three two to zero zero one, fine, we are not defined anything at all. Fine, go that count. We'll go to the search now. In the return direction, what happens? We are not defined it. The different different direction, return direction, nothing is defined. But when you're going to return it back, there is no necessary for you to have the interop parameter at all. Right? When you're returning it, I'm not going to return it from the second order to first order. At the time, what happens? The interop parameter is not required. Only when you're creating a fresh movement of material between two orgs, at the time only for every pair, you have to have the interop parameters defined. When I'm returning back, no parameters are required. Actually. Click on cancel. So and then one more thing is what I will not I, on the other if I manage uh, ship confirm rule. I was uh, deferring the interface, so uh, rather I will not do one thing. I will not remove the diff differ of it. I click on it. I will not go there. T zero three. I will not query for it. I click on it. I will not click on it. I click on it. And then I will know what remove the default. So that what happens, it will be communicating to the destination organization that it has been shipped and then you can you are very well ready to receive it. So the differ has been uh, de demonstrated basically in the other training. 
and click on save and close. I'm now removing the default. It's all done now. Click on. So having, having done uh, so many setups now like this, so what you do is you go on and log on and log. It's always preferable to what happens whenever so, so many setups are done, you always preferably log out and log in. Log out and log in. So we are now logging in now. <clears throat> so now we will now go and then create a transfer order, manual transfer order. So yesterday we were created a, a transfer order using MinMax now. Now we are going to do a manual transfer order. I click on it. I will now go to the uh, what's called your inventory overview. And then I will now switch to the destination organization. Click on it. I will now go to the manage item quantities and then change to destination organization. So the destination needs a material from the source actually. If I click on change. I'll now say it's a T032 is the one. This needs the material from the source actually. I click on OK. I will not go there. I will not query for the quantity. If I click on the manage item quantity, we are in the destination organization. If you go there, T0306 and then give a tab. And then if you click on search, you'll find the whole item is coming. Now if I click on search, there is no quantity at all. Now I need 120 quantities to be transferred from the first org actually. So you now we have query nothing is there. If I go to the actions and then here, what happens is you can very well manually create a transfer order. Right? So transfer orders can be manual, transfer orders can be automatic. Right? When you're using a min-max, it will be automatically creating it. And then through the sales order also, we can automatically create it. Right? This is not possible for an interop transfer. Right? And then movement request also, what happens is all manual actually. Movement request is also manual. Only transfer order is the only thing where we can very well do it. Now. And request transfer order. This is a manual transfer order. On the other day, we have seen the automatic transfer. So we are now manually requesting it. Click on the request transfer order. So go click on it. Item is what? T0306 and then give a tab. <clears throat> request to quantity is 120 now. Remember, we have two lots, one order, one not two. And then what is the requested delivery date? I will not say what is that. Uh, today itself, I need it now. Fine, click on okay. <clears throat> I will not say one that. And then click on the supply details. Fine, you are going to give supply details. So from where you want it, you are going to say fine, click on the supply details. I go there. So the destination submittery, fine, go that corner. I will now put what FGS actually. Fine, T032. And then it will now come out of the SD. Is the FGS. So on this destination, my orders. The source organization is what? I will now say T031. <clears throat> 2031. <clears throat> I'm going to put T03. Uh, is a small T03. The organization name actually. But it also won't come in. The source organization. Can go there. So here, 1 to 2 is already this way. So go there. Organization name is a T03. And then and click on search. Oh God, not coming at all. No, I will go there and click on search. I'm going to get blank search actually. Go to the advanced and then make a search and effect on it. I don't know. Organization uh, name starts with the T03. And then I click on search. And... Because between T03 to uh, 31 to 32, we are already defined actually. We are already on the child 2 actually. Cancel now. <clears throat> Why is it not coming? Cancel. Uh, I will now again click on the supply details now. So the destination submittery is on the second dog's MGS now. Uh, I will now one of us where the destination location is not required. Now. So submittery go that corner. I will now go to this place now. So organization. Wherever you have defined, everything will be coming now. Right? Nothing is coming here now. Right? There is some mistake somewhere. It's a transfer actually. Thank you, cancel now. So let me make a check of it now. So now I made one mistake here actually. You know, go there and then query the item actually. You know, go there, go to query. I will now go to the product information management. One mistake I have made actually. So the item must be enabled for transfer orders. Fine, that is the missing actually. So go there, click on it. I will now go to um, what happens here? You know, go there. I will now go to browse items and then query the item actually. So the item must be enabled for the transfer orders. My T0306. And then click on search and searching for it. So if you go there, in the top one is the master lock. And you know that one, I will now click on the hyperlink of it. The item has to be enabled for the transfer orders. And go to the specifications. So go there. I will now go to the sales and order management. So here, what I have to do is I have to what internally transfer rule must be yes. Actually. This must be yes, and then transfer order enabled must be yes. This is not, it is yes, and then this is also yes. Right? This is one thing which I forgot to mention. So I have not done the master actually. So internally transferable and then transfer order enabled is yes, no fine, click on it. So click on save and close. And then I will now 
see on the child's also. I'm going to come on. Go to the child, the first child, and go there. Go to the specifications. You go to the specifications now. So in this place, I go to the sales and order management. If it is a master control, it will be coming. No, it is not a master control. It is a child control. No, the allowance get there is no. And this also yes, this also yes. Like that. So we had to do it every bad now. So there is a mistake I've done. Had I done it in the beginning itself, there will not be any problem. I will not go there. Click on it. I will not make it as what internal transferable as yes. So go to the specifications, <clears throat> and then here I will not go to the sales and order management. And then I will not make it as what yes here, and then this here. This is for the return actually. The second to first, it has to come now. I click on it. So save and close. So it's all done now. <clears throat> now let us now go there and then have a look at the item coin. Again, if I click on it, you can go to the space. Uh, again, whenever you make a major change, have a habit of what signing out and signing in. So then only the changes will be getting reflected over here. If I click on confirm and then sign in. I don't know. Go there and then close it. Now you go there. <clears throat> I will now go to the inventory overview and click on the inventory overview. Here. You go to this place and go to, and now go to the manage item quantities. No? So go to the manage item quantities and change the org to my T3, T032. There is a destination org needs the material lecture. So click on it. <clears throat> I'm in T302. I will now go there. I will now go to the manage item quantities. And then I will now put the item T0306 and then give it there. And then okay, fine. Click on search, there won't be any item at all. Now, from here, I'm now going to make a transfer order. Fine, go ahead. This is a manual transfer order, request transfer order. Now, it is now enabled for the transfer orders actually. T0306 is the one, and give it there. And then requested quantity is 120. And then here, I will now say uh, tomorrow's day. No, okay, I need it tomorrow. I am going to the supply details. And then the destination sub inventory is T03. And then I will now put FGS2 now. So the source organization T03, <clears throat> you put source organization becoming. So I will be saying child one. The source sub inventory, I will now leave it for the system to allocate actually. Okay. The source sub inventory. If you're putting it, it will now pick up only from the sub inventory. Otherwise, we can allow the system to allocate. But we have material only on the FGS only. So it doesn't matter. Fine. Uh, because we normally leave it blank. Because the power of allocation is what it will now see based upon so many conditions. The first expiry, first order, the sub inventory, ascending, descending, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's it. Go that okay, now. So now from child one, it is now going to bring it to the uh, zero, this is the sub inventory, which is going to frankly come okay. So the supply details have been provided. It is normally blank fine for that component, and then it will now submit it. So once when you submit it, what happens? You'll be having a supply reference number also. It will now copy the reference number. And then click on submit by which the system will be getting a manual transfer order. It takes some time actually. It won't be coming immediately. I click on it. So the transfer order for 120 quantities is now getting created actually. I click on that. Now we'll now go there and then have a look at it. So transfer orders can be seen from anywhere. Right? It can be in any org and then see it. Now I click on it. And then here, what happens? You go to the manage transfer order. So, so here we can even add a column over here. Now find with click on this add add fields. Now click on add fields. So we can even add a add a field over here. Now I click on add fields. And then here I will now say one uh oh, this is available actually. Uh sorry. So we have what uh supply request number actually. Supply request reference number. So we can even add a field and then we'll now paste it obviously. Give it up. So we can even query on the supply request reference field now. Or otherwise, we can even give the source or destination. I click on search now. So the system would have created, of course, this is also must actually, apart from this. I go there. So the source organization is what T031 now. One, one of them is required actually. I go there. So click on. So this also is an additional one. If there are multiple things there on the supply request number, also we can make a search now. I click on search. And then it takes some time. It's not yet created actually. So now wait for it now. <clears throat> So about us. The source organization is T031. So the manual transfer order will be getting created actually. So wait for it to come. It takes some time actually. So we are now uh, uh, allowed certain time actually. If I go there, click on manage transfer orders. Go there, click on it. And then I'm not adding that a field actually. If I'm the source organization, I'm putting the T031 as a source. I'm going to click on it and then make a search. 
So I, I waited for some time and then it is now gone. This is now awaiting fulfillment actually. So let us now go and then pick this transfer order actually. So the transfer order is what? 152047. And then if you go there and then select it. And then if you click on the view shipment and reserve details, nothing has been shipped actually. So I'll now right click and then duplicate. Let us now go and then pick it actually. So 120 quantities has to be picked up. I will now right click at the duplicate also. So we had to pick 120 quantities. Go that I will now pick it actually. So click on it. I will now go to the inventory overview. <clears throat> and then I will now click on it. I will now go to the shipments. I click on the shipments. I will now go to the shipments. And then here, I will now go to the manage shipment lines. And then I will now put the transfer order number. 152047 is the one. So you will now go to the space. I will now put what? Change the organization. You can change the organization to what? The source organization. T03 is one of the one. And click on it. So in this org, I'm going to pick now. I'll click on it. Organization is changed now. I'll go to the management lines. And then 152047 actually. 152047. And then if you make it as a before, it will definitely pick it. It won't be a problem. This is the best practice actually. And then I'll leave it blank actually. And then click on search now. And then we have 100 on each lot actually. I'll make a search. And then once we launch the pick release, based upon the picking rule, it will be picking it. So the picking rule for this source to destination is what? First expiry, first order. I know that. So you go to actions and then go to launch pick release. So 102 is expiring first. It will now allocate 100 quantities of it. And then afterwards, the balance will be allocated from 101 actually. So 20 quantities of 101 will be allocated. So go there. Give a save and close. So give a save and close. You can now see it will be a two lines of allocation because 120 is required. So 120 each was. So expand it and then save. Thank you for it. And then I make a search again now. Fine. It's now ready to release. It will be staged actually. You can now see two lines are coming. So one for 100 quantities and one for this now. So we will now see the lot expiry actually. And we will now see whether any field is there. If I go to the view and then go to the column, no mind. Uh, inventory details, lot details is there. On here. There must be some other thing. Okay? So if you have that, what happens if you have inventory attributes? Oh God, it's also not coming. <laughs> How to see the serial number, lot number, the there and expiration date is not there at all in the inventory. Hmm. It's going not on. Fine. We'll now go there and then click on the shipment and then inside we'll now see the 100, 100 point is what happens. Your expiry date actually. We'll click on it. The lot expiry we have seen. We'll click on it. So the lot expiry has to be seen. We'll click on it. Uh, we'll now see at least the lot number. Fine. Oh, lot number also can be seen. Now, fine. So go to the view and then go to the column and then uh, the others. I've forgotten it. So we can see everything over there now, but not exactly remembering it actually. Uh, I will know, outside itself, we can see now. I click on lock, cancel now. And then here itself, what happens? You can go to the view and then go to the columns now. Fine. Uh, others, here, lot number is there and lot number is not there at all. I will now go to the inventory attributes. Now, if I click on it, the bottom, what happens? We'll be having the inventory attributes. Oh, it's not coming. Uh, we will now go to the inventory details. Sorry. Here itself, we can see. So, in this place, we have the inventory details. So, if you see the inventory details, it shows you lot 102 is the lot. Fine with that. So, again, what happens? It will now come. So, lot 102 is the first lot. Fine. It is inventory details. 100 quantities of lot 102 because that is expiring first because of which what happens? It has got allocated actually. And the balance from 102 actually is very good. So, both of them are the ISF and UST, the initial ship from and then I, uh, ultimate ship to a same. And so ISF and UST are same means what? It will be creating a same shipment number. And click on it. You know, go there, click on it. You will now perform a ship confirmation first. You will now perform ship confirmation. So both of them will be confirmed now. So if you leave it blank, it will be the entire quantity will be shipped actually. So click on ship. So 102 is what? Uh, 400 quantities and then 101 of what? Uh, 20 quantities. And click on ship confirmation. <clears throat> so it is giving you a warning on weight and volume. We can ignore all those things. Click on it. not fine. By which whatever it gets shipped. So it is not going there. Fine. It is not shipped. And then go there. And then we'll now come back to the managed transfer orders. And then you can now see it's now shipped. And then you will now see the expected receipt date also coming. Because I have now removed what the differ interface I have been removed. Now I click on it. <laughs> I will now click on the view shipment results. It's now shipped. And then expected receipt date is also good. So we are told manually that we want it tomorrow actually. So tomorrow we are not given it. So it is not expected. 
So let us now go there, go to the destination of, I will go to the place, I will now go to the destination of my torrent. I will now give up, oh, cancel on. <clears throat> I will now go to the destination of, and then receive it. And click on it. Now go there. So go to the what? Uh, you know, go there, go to the reception. Now click on the results. And then receive expected shipment. Receive expected shipment. And then change the R to what? Your T032. T032. So click on OK. Not doing it. <clears throat> so go there. You know, go to the place. Click on it. You know, go to what? Receive expected shipment. <clears throat> So here, the transfer order number, if you write it, is what 152. If you write this much, 152, if you give it up, automatically the whole number will be coming because it is expected from the consult. You're going to, what happens, receive it now. Right? With the control, you select both the lines. Right? And then click on receive. And we are receiving it. So we are receiving it. Thank you. So with the control, we are not doing it. Right? So click on the show receive quantity. It will be showing everything. <clears throat> it will be showing everything. So how much is the quantity on this now? Right? So whatever is there, you can accept it. So after accepting it, there is no need to provide. A supplementary cannot be provided. Only during delivery, we can do it. Thank you. So I'm going to account back to content. So we are now creating a GRN number. So the GRN number gets created. Thank you. So once we submit it, the GRN number gets created. So 2003 is the GRN number. We'll now do the put away for this. Thank you. Okay. We'll now do the put away. Thank you. Now. <clears throat> so the allocation we have seen. Now. The allocation is the power of a transfer order. So there are three uh, basic advantages of a transfer order. One is allocation. One is printing of very many documents. The picking documents, the shipping documents, your uh, vehicle loading trip sheets, and then uh, uh, your commercial invoices. And then there are so many things, right? Performer invoices, so many things you can uh, uh, print along with it. So printing of documents is the second advantage. The third one is automatic. So we can even use it from inventory, automatically create a transfer order. And then sales order also, we can automatically create a sales order. So these are the three major advantages of a transfer order over inter of transfers, actually. Go that go that one. Now we'll now do the put away. So 2003 is the one point. Click on the put away results. 2003 is the GRN number. Go there. So click on search now. Fine. You're going to put away. Select both lines and then do the put away. Click on put away. You're going to put away. Go there. So go there. everything is okay. Fine. So the system, uh, we have asked the item to be kept on the 032 if GS okay. Fine. Okay. If you want, you can override it. So this is done with the, in the destination or so the inventory in charge in the destination may even override this because the source man has told that to put it. But if you want, you can even very well override it. Thank you, Consabit. No. You're not overriding it. Thank you, Consabit. So by which whatever, you must enter a value for the serial number. Yeah. Now it's saying the serial number. Thank you, so go there. Click on it. So now uh, if you select it, so the 20 quantities is already there. I don't know. It's not there. asking for the serial number and what. And go to the actions and then what happens? I will not say view details or record lot serial numbers. So click on it. So the 20 count is lot one not one record lot serial numbers. Record lot serial numbers when you go there, click on it. You know, record the lot and serial numbers. You got only one lot for this now. Fine, click on it. Select the transfer order lots, fine, click on it. Fine, go there. Is one. Fine. One not two, the one for 20. Fine, go there. Uh, one not two. Oh god, how come? Uh, give a cancel now. <clears throat> cancel. So for the 20 quantities now, fine. For that. So for 100 quantities, so 100 quantities must be lot 102 actually. The 100 quantities must be lot 102. <clears throat> Put away. You know, putting away actually. So it has come with this one now, fine. 100 quantities is lot 102. When select it and then go to actions and then here what happens? The record lot and serial numbers. Go there. And then click on plus <clears throat> and then drop down. And then search for it. And then click on search now. Only one lot has to come. Yes, that's the only thing which is coming. So lot one auto is coming. So this is one. So go there. So one not two of hundred lot. That's the only thing which is coming. Fine, click on OK. So we are now located this now. Fine, click on it. And then we'll now go to this one. This will be one not one. Select it. And then go to actions and then go to record lot and serial numbers. And then click on plus and then do it. Then click on plus. And then drop it down and then make a search. We'll have only one lot available on this. Click on search. And how only one lot? There is one not. So now, after having given the lot and serial numbers during put away, fine, even though it is coming only with that, so if there are multiple lots, then you have to select it. I don't know, even for one also, it is asking for it. I don't know. I rather have forgotten that actually. Thank you. So by which we are now completed the put away. Thank you. The put away transaction was created. You know, thank you. Now, you know, go there. Fine, go to the transfer orders. I will not go on that. Done and then see that it is now received and delivered. Now, thank you. Now. <clears throat> So view shipment and reception. So it's now received and delivered and everything is complete actually.
Now, this guy is going to return back 25 <clears throat> from the second order to the next order stop. So we are going to perform a return from the second order, 25 quantities. So now the picking rule is different actually while return. So while return, what happens? Lot number ascending is the one. So we have 20 quantities of lot 101. So that will be allocated first. The remaining five will be allocated on 102 actually. So lot number ascending is the picking rule for return actually. I'll go that to one number. I'll now return it. So give a cancel. Now go that to one number. We will now perform a return actually. No perform a return. Mm -hmm. So now we are going to perform a return for the transfer order. Right? So the original transfer order number is what? 152047. Now, go to this place. I am in the destination or will now go there. Click on it. It will now go to the receipts and that will now create a return receipts. Fine. Return receipts. Return returns and return receipts. Fine. Go to the return. So uh, the transfer order number is what? Uh, 152047. So 152 and then give a tap. It can be populating everything automatically. So it's not coming. So I am in the destination or only fine. I'm going to click on it. So click on return results and click on search now. It's coming. Fine. Maybe some problem in that thing now. Fine. It's not coming. 152071. I click on it. So I'm not going to return 25 quantities. Fine. Click on search. <clears throat> so go there. So here, what I will do is uh, I am going to return something, something, something. Okay, fine. I have to specify the lot. I thought I want. What happens? The system to allocate it, but it is now what happens? And no, we're not doing it actually. So <laughs> I have to return only manually actually. So if it is a total, it will be okay. Man. Uh, in that case, what I want to check the picking rule basically. <laughs> so I will now select both. No, thank you. So let me go there and then again perform a result now. Return now. I click on the return results because the return has got a different picking rule in place now. Right. Now go there. One five two. You want to have zero four seven has to come. It's not coming. If I drop it down and then choose it will be coming. Search. Search. Click on search actually. <clears throat> search. Then go there. Choose it and then click on search. I will not select both the lines. Both the lines are there. Had it been allowed me to return uh, based upon allocation, it is okay, fine, brother. So I will not, what happens? I will not go for five quantities, or you know, fine, click on five quantities, but then here 20. We will not see whether it accepts it or not. Fine. Otherwise, what happens? You have to go to actions, and so you can't perform this. So you have to record the lot and serial numbers, actually. So uh, I will now remove it, first of all, and then put, select the line. Uh, you can perform a return. You can't perform a return to organization transfer because inter organization parameters are not set up. Oh, God. So I was under the impression that there is no need for us to set up this uh, uh, inter -org parameters between 3, 2, 3, 1. Now it is saying it is a must actually. You can't perform a return to organization transfer, organization transaction because it is not set actually. So I was under the impression this is not required. Okay, fine. This is required actually. So click on OK. Now. I will now right click and then duplicate. So let us now set up the inter -org parameters also. But I did it long time back in at the time what happens, it wasn't asking for it actually. So click on set up. So go there. So click on search and find manage inter org parameter. So go there, click on it. I will not click on plus now. So I will not say it's a T032 to T031. And then I say a transfer order required. So the return transaction will now create a transfer order. Fine. It's a kilometer. The return will be creating a transfer order. Actually. And then I will say it's the in transit. And then I will now make it as what? Standard. So the return from this place is now going to create a transfer order. I will now give a save and close now. <laughs> and then done. And then preferably log out and log in. Sign out and sign in and then do it. Sign out and then click on OK and confirm and then sign in. So I will now go to this place, close it, close it, close. It is now signed in now. I don't know if John is Okay, I will now go there. So I will now again sign out and sign in. I am not exactly remembering it on this screen. I was using it actually. So confirm and then sign in now. Now I will now perform a receipt return now. You will see what happens. So go to this place and click on it. Go to the inventory overview. 
and I'll move Pagumar it down. Click on it. And then move it. I will now go to what? Results, and then you go to the returns. My return results. Fine. 1.2. 047 is the one time you attack and then make a search and open, click on search. Well, oh, I'm in the wrong organization actually. So click on change or and then change it to my org. So the 032 is the one. I click on OK. The organization not changed. Like that. So we'll not perform it done. Now go to the results and then click on the result results. <clears throat> so go there. So uh, transfer order number is what? 152047 and then give it a tap and then click on search. I will now select both the lines, both the lines, and then bring it over here. So in the first line, I will now go for five quantities. So this is what lot one, lot two, now find selected, and then go to actions, and then go to record lot one serial numbers. And then here, lot is coming automatically. Whereas while receiving it, what happens is we have to give a plus, and then you have to choose the lot, actually. So this lot is coming automatically over here. I, click on okay. I thought that the picking rule will come into picture, but that is not coming. So it is now showing you separately every line. If it had it been lump, the picking rule would have been tested actually. And for the actions, you know, say how much you're going to it will be. <clears throat> select it and then you're going to action and go to record lots of numbers. So it's already coming, okay? Everything is coming. Lot of lot of stuff. <laughs> so no need to what happens there. Go via actions fine. It is already taking it back to consummate. Now the system will now create a transfer order because it needs a transfer order. Had I not enabled it, what happens? It will be getting returned in an IoT machine. In the IOT fashion, it will be going, but since it is a return as a transfer order, so it will be creating a transfer order. I click on submit. It will be creating a transfer The written transaction was created actually. Okay. Now, let us now go there and then query now and take some time actually. <clears throat> I click on done now. So, total go the left third quantity is 95 actually because uh, uh, 125 or uh, other uh, uh, 20 and then uh, what happens? Uh, okay, fine, whatever it is. It's now gone there. So we'll now go there and then we'll now have a look at it. If I click on it. We'll now go to what? You go to uh, inventory now. If I click on the inventory. <clears throat> and then you go to manage transfer orders. Now. Go to the manage transfer orders. So the source organization is what? T032. Fine. I click on search. So 25 quantity is now fine. So 25 is now available. Now fine. I will now go there. So we have to, what happens? Do the picking and shipping. Now. And right click on that. What happens? There? Duplicate it. And then we are now going to do the pick and ship. So this is a new transfer order number, 152050 is a transfer order number, fine, go back to what? I will now do the picking and shipping. Click on it, we'll now go to the inventory. And then you go there, I will now go to the shipments now, I click on it. So go there, go to the shipments, and then manage shipments, you must be on the destination order. We are already in the destination order, fine, go there. So we'll now go and then put it now, fine, click on it. Transfer order number is 152050. So 152050, and give it a tab now. And then I make it as before. Before is the best one, now click on search. It will show both the lines, actually. Both the lines are not fine. So I'll not select both the lines, fine. Both the lines. Let me create a shipment now, auto-create a shipment. So if the ISF and UST are same, it will now be giving the same shipment number, actually. Anyway, yeah, you must define the shipping parameters, okay. Shipping parameters is a must, actually, that we are not defined. So if the shipping parameters are not defined, it will not be coming, fine, because we have not done it. So that is a mistake, fine. Good that we are making mistakes, actually. <laughs> we have to define the shipping parameters from two to one, actually. The shipping parameters are the, what happens, your uh, destination org, fine. Uh, the shipping parameters are source org. Shipping parameters are source org, have defined. And go to the setup and maintenance. The shipping parameter of the source org has been defined. If I click on it, we will now go to the search. So here the source is a zero to no, fine. So the manage percentage, fine. Ship percentage, fine. Parameter percentage. I will not choose the organization T032 actually. So we will not change the is already there now. So ship confirmation rule, I will not use the same rule now. Thank you. Weight is weight. Volume is volume. So weight is volume. I will not use what the other one automatically coming. I will not go there. I now create only one RSR and then one PSGR. I'm not using the same thing now. Thank you. It's okay. The staging supplementary will not go there. What is the staging supplementary? So this is a staging from there. And that's it. And then do not enforce the shipping. Shipping method is not enforced. This is required only for transportation management, actually. Otherwise, we can leave it as well. I click on save and close now. So the shipping parameter is not defined now. Thank God. So now go to the manage shipment lines and then go there. I will not go on the now auto create shipment. So the shipping parameter has been defined. So the shipment number is now done. I will not click on the shipment number and then not launch the pick release actually. I will not go to actions and go to pick release. Now. Fine. 
So already uh, the numbers are created. Had there been, uh, what happens is now coming as a lump, our picking rule will now come into picture actually. I want to test that, but <laughs> we don't have the option of testing it actually. I will not give a save and close, no fine. So, but I wanted you to understand now how the picking rule works actually. So go click on it. It will be staged actually. Thank you so much. It will be staged. So the staging is on the 0 3 to arc man. You know, go there. We'll not perform a ship confirmation. So click on ship confirmation. You know, confirming it. The warnings can be ignored. Fine, click on us. No fine. By which what happens? It will be shipped. Fine, no shipped. And then it will now get interfaced to the 0 T301 also. Fine, go there. Go and manage orders. And then click on what? And the manage transfer orders. Fine, click on it. It will have been shipped actually. So click on the view ship under the zips. You know, they've not shipped. And then we have to receive it also. We'll not go to the place and then we'll not receive it. Okay, click on it. So we'll not give a save and close and then we'll not receive it on the, on the destination or for the return actually. One more thing is what? One more thing. I'll not go to the management lines. And then here also it will not show the transfer order number. Uh, I know it's not, uh, it will not show you the transfer order number also. 152050. 152050. And then if you make a search, no fine, click on it. It will not say it's the return transfer order. It will not clearly say that it's the return transfer order. Somewhere it will not show you that it is the return order. Oh, the order type is what? Return transfer. So here it is not showing you as a return order, return transfer order. So when I perform the receipt, what happens? It has now created a return transfer order actually. Because the interrupt parameter says it is a return, it is a transfer order. And so what happens? It is not showing as a return transfer order. Actually. So here it is. I want to show that actually. So we'll now go there, click on it. And then uh, as is also done now, uh, we'll now go there and then we'll now receive it in the destination. Now. We'll now receive it now. So go there, go to the place. Uh, we'll now go to the receipts now. <coughs> and then go to the receive expected shipments on the Z T031 now. T031 is the one. Okay. Go to the place and go there. Receive expected shipments. Is, how much is what? 152 now. So go there. 152, the one thing we have. It will be coming from the click on search. So select both and then what happens? You know, receive it and then deliver it also. And click on receive. And then click on show receipt quantity. If you click on create receipt, it may ask for a number. Thank you. Click on create receipt. Ah, it's not coming quickly. It's not. <laughs> it's already come with the lot numbers and other things. So click on submit. It's not asking for. Last time it asked for, I don't know it. So receipt number 302 is now created. Thank you. Click on that. Well done. Now, what I'm going to go there and then we'll load the put away. When 3002, we are going to make a put away. I click on the put away and then put away the 3002. So, the return transfer order is not getting put away. We can even go for a normal one also, not not the way a transfer order. If it is a transfer order is not enabled, then it will be immediately be visible on the destination. Select both the lines and then click on the put away and then go there. Thank you on summit. Fine, everything is coming. Thank you. I'm getting away. Oh, you must enter a submit and submit is not entered while doing it. Now, I can submit. So, FGS1 is the one. I will not put the different one, but just understanding. So, click on submit. Now. So, submit is not put it. You must enter a value for the lot sale number. Oh, God, it is not asking it. <laughs> this time it is asking for. I don't know when it will ask, when it will not ask. I don't know now. So, select it and then go there. So, the lot number, fine. Click on action. Now. Action. Maybe while you are. Uh, what happens? Uh, bring you for the other org. What happens? It required. Fine. Lot number. And click on plus, and then drop down, and then choose it. Fine. Now only one lot available there actually. And click on search. So there's the only lot available. Fine. Click on okay now. Lot one on two, and then go the expiry date is also coming. Fine. Five commandos. Fine. Click on okay now. Hold on. <clears throat> and then select the next line, and then uh, go to action, and then go to record lot serial numbers, and then click on plus, and then choose the lot. <clears throat> search. So click on search, lot one, not one, and select it and then click on the only lot available. And it's expiring on this now. Okay. Hmm. So that's it. Fine. Go there, click on submit by which what happens. Uh, the put away is also getting completed. Now we can go to the transfer orders and then have all that what happens. The received and delivered, everything will be coming. Hmm. So since I have not given the date on which it's not coming, it is now giving you the expected receipt date as 23 only. So click on done and then come back here and then make a check. Now click on view shift funds and receipts and then have all that. You know, received and delivered. So this is on allocation of a transfer order mm -hmm. that we have seen from source to destination. And then on the return, we are unable to use the picking rule. Fine, I want to use the picking rule and then see it. Now, but uh, the system is asking for us to individually what happens, uh, pick the specific lot which you want to return back. So uh, that is why what happens, we are unable to do it. Had it not been, in, in, in the picking rule has got some other criteria on a revision or something like that, 
or locators probably uh, the picking rule will not come into picture fine try with the revision of locators and then uh, check whether it is allocating the term fine because here and even allocate because it's not asking you a specific pair lot number so because of which we are unable to what happens, use the picking rule actually so we are now seeing what happens a picking rule also in this training right so return with the picking right so that is what it is so bye for now and then we'll see on some other day.